Hello everyone and welcome to the April edition of Support Textbird Thursdays. Today's presentation is Troubleshooting Section Access in ClickSense Enterprise with Mike Reese. Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Trey. I'm a senior solution architect with Click. My main focus is helping guide customers in their Click journey through pre-sales. And I actually have 14 years total experience with Click. Uh, over six now actually working for Click directly and eight in the partner space consulting, uh, wearing various hats, implementation, architecture, design, development, project management, uh, you name it. Great. So Mike, what are you going to be showing us today? Today I will be covering section access. So what is section access? We'll go through uh, a couple scenarios of role-based access. We'll do some impersonation. Um, so you, you'll get a kind of a good understanding of how you could get into an application as a different user, actually test uh, their entitlements, and, and easily flip between the, the different types of, of, of access that you might need to implement in your security model. Um, so then we'll also see how that is applied through the load script. And then at the end, we'll, we'll go through some data modeling tips that help facilitate section access and different levels of facts, different types of facts, multi-fact table, and being able to set up security in a seamless way. And then also we'll go through our takeaways and tips and tricks. Great. So how does section access work? Good segue. I just have a couple of slides to help frame the demo and then a few more to, to reinforce what I show. Data authorization using section access is implemented using reserve words as field names and values for your entitlements table where access levels are assigned to users within the section access part of the script. These tables must contain a minimum of two system fields, access being one of them. As you come in, a user logs into the application, they're either designated as an admin through this access keyword or a user. And if you're an admin, you have access to all the data. And if you're a user, then you have access to reduce sets of data based on whatever's designated to you in this entitlements table uh, that's set up in the load script. Okay. So it's all about controlling the data that's shown to the user based on their profile. That's right. So uh, literally you're setting up uh, an entitlements table and through the, the power of Click's associative model, those associations designate what a user can see and what they cannot see. That sounds like the basics of how Click works. What's the difference between the association of any table and the section access table? Perfect. So to, to help visualize the mechanics, we have a, a click data model accompanied by a section access table. And all we need to do is associate one field between the data model tables and the section access tables. So in this case, we have department. And this would work with any field, right? It doesn't have to be departments, whatever, whatever field you want to designate as your security field. And so, so in this case, it does work exactly like the associative model. So the, then the difference is mainly it's distinguishing between the security table and the application facing data model through the use of the reserve words that I mentioned that I promised to talk about at least once more through this demo. Uh, one of the others that I'll cover right now is the omit, which is used to, to designate the names of, of fields that users should not see. So basically, if you're looking at this John, uh, he would not see the, the social security number field and, and neither would Steve. And so uh, something unique to click is that you're now you're, you're seeing the benefit of data reduction that's row level security through associations the way click works natively and then you're also seeing the, the ability to apply column level security through through omit okay what if i have more than one field that i want to omit yeah well that's that's actually perfect so this is this is what the the data model looks like with the security table so if section access was turned on the, the the security tables wouldn't be visible in the data model. Uh, they would be hidden because they're security tables. Um, but one of the things I'm going to cover in this demo is how you can easily test section access through, through the uh, impersonation. What this example is showing you is section access is turned off, and that's simply by commenting out the section access declaration, and we'll see more of that as we go through it. What I've done is I've created an, an omit group and a secondary table to just list all the fields that I would need to omit for different users. So basically, it's, it's a one-to-many, right? So instead of having, in the example I showed you before, one user and one omit field. Um, this just gives me a, a secondary table to, to have that one-to-many relationship. So if I have three fields, I'd have, I'd have three rows in this table per user as opposed to three rows in this table. Now I could do it either way. I could have multiple rows per user for each field in this authorization table that I set up. And this would be my only section access table, but I just set it up as a second table just to, to make it e easier to see, right? So this, is, this would be one-to-one -one per user, and this would be one-to-many for all the omit fields. 
Okay. And now when you talk about turning section access on and off, is that like a setting in the QMC or how is that done? That's actually done in the load script. So you can see here, I've, I've added a, a, a couple screen captures of that section access declaration. Any script that f falls below the section access declaration and before the section application declaration is all interpreted as uh, data reduction and section access security. So effectively, all I need to do is comment that declaration. You'll see those, those two tables are here. With it turned on, those two tables are now gone this is what the user would see if they were in a published application with section access turned on. What I'm left with is this, this floating island that I use for some user experience things related to what the, the users can and cannot see. So I understand you've got a demo set up for us. What version of ClickSense are you going to be demoing? Uh, it's, I'm actually going to be demonstrating ClickSense SaaS. Okay. There are some similarities. There are a couple differences that I'll cover throughout this, but everything everything is moving towards the cloud. So I figured why not show the, the latest and greatest that, that Click has to offer. Yeah. What we're looking at now is just something that, that we have set up. It's called Sportal. You could actually get it on GitHub. It's just a way to impersonate different user access. Three roles that I'm going to demonstrate would be like myself, calling myself the CIO. I have access to all the data. I develop things. I'm a tinkerer. I see the whole entire application, all the data, all the visualizations. The other person I'll log into this with is Claire, who's a marketing lead in the North, and she has visibility into a couple different territories and sales data. And then lastly, we'll log in as Lisa Grisham, who is a sales director, and she has visibility into uh, individual rep data in the South Territory. All right, so here we have the, the ClickSense hub. And what I'm gonna do first is get into a, a published copy where the security is already applied, right? So here I have my published copy, which is indicated by this red, this is published to the everyone space versus this one, which is in my personal space where I'm doing the development. And, uh, and that's where I can do my role impersonation. So we're gonna start here. Okay, now, yeah, can you walk us through this app a little bit? So I've got a few sheets to help demonstrate the security. I've got a sales op tab. I've got a tab to show the associations and the reduction. I really want to emphasize that the security in ClickSense, the section access data reduction, is it, it works the same way as the associative model. You're logging in, Sense is clicking on a value behind the scenes, and then it reduces that data set to everything that's related to that value. Can you tell us what the colors indicate? So the, the omit groups that I had designated are encompassing the fields that would be hidden uh, based on your access rights and your entitlements table. Remember that omit keyword. Mm. The contact info group is going to omit phone and SSN for the users that are in the contact info group. If you're in the office group, you're going to lose visibility into the office city. And if you're in the salary omit group, then you lose visibility into the salary field. All right. So I'm going to jump into this sales ops tab. And as a user that can see everything, I see the total sales for the organization. So that's four hundred twenty-two thousand um, dollars. Note the logo here. That's going to change when I when I come in and, and do my uh, testing with section access turned off, so I can do some impersonation. And then over here, you're going to notice this is a scatter table that lists all of my sales reps, right? So there's a number of different sales reps here. Mm -hmm. Down below, we have revenue by territory and customer. So these are all my territories, and then I can actually drill through to the different territories. And that's important because you, when you see the data reduction, you're going to see how this, this table is affected. In one instance, you're going to see it reduced down to two territories. In another, you're not going to see any territories. It's automatically going to be reduced to the customer level data because a person only has visibility in the one territory. So this is if we're logged in as a admin, right? That's right. Yeah. Somebody, somebody has visibility to the total data set. Okay. And then uh, just as we were talking about the color coded columns, these are the three that I'm actually applying. It's the salary, office, city, and phone. That is the main thing here. And I just want to come into this associations tab. For those who aren't that familiar with ClickSense and the associative model, when I click on a value, all the associated values are in white. And anything that's not associated is in gray. So that's, that's the secret sauce. So security literally works the same way. So if I log in as a user and all I can see is New England territory, well, I'm only going to see data for the city of Newton. I'm not going to see any of these cities. These are going to evaporate. Uh, and I would say before my eyes, but it would be actually before I even get to see anything. So I, obviously that's security, right? I'm not going to see anything related to reps that aren't in white. All these reps are not in my purview. They disappear. But as somebody that can see the whole data set, I can see all these associations uh, across all my data. So can we test this with one of the other users? I'm going to go in as Claire. And Claire is a marketing lead in the North. So Claire has visibility in the two territories. Okay. And now Claire, Claire sees this, right? So same application, but the difference is with no selections applied, I'm only seeing 212,000 in sales. Right, that's going right? down. Okay. That's right. So the data reduction is working. I still see all the visualizations. However, 
this visualization has changed. You might recall in the previous application, we were looking at uh, a scatter chart. Now we're seeing sales by product and territory distribution. And that's because she's a marketing manager and this products are more relevant to her than a scatter chart of sales reps. So this demonstrates using section access to, to really drive what visualizations a user can see, right? So you can do that at the, at the object level. You can do it at the field level. You can also do it at the sheet level. Notice now the territories have been reduced. Uh, we had a number of territories, I think seven or eight or something like that. Now we've, we've been reduced to two territories, Canada and New England. Now I can still drill through, right? And I can still get to the customer level, but I just don't see all the territories that, that I wouldn't have visibility into. And I see that salary field is missing as well. Exactly, right? So now that green field is gone because I shouldn't have visibility into salary data as a, a marketing manager. And so so that's it. That's that's actually data reduction and, and object level security at work through section access. So now they go into associations. Again, that green salary column is gone, but on the right-hand side of the screen, we can also see that the reps have been reduced to really emphasize that. Let me jump back into my other example. As the administrator, here's all the city data. Here's all the territory data, right? Flipping back over here, you can see that those data are reduced and I'm not seeing the gray, right? Because I don't have right. visibility into it. So that's, that's what the data reduction is doing. It, it actually is removing that data from the application. When you have section access turned on, does it actually affect the performance of opening the app? Yeah, so it could. If, if you have a very large application and the reduced data set is much smaller than that, then the perception of the user is going to be it's taking, it could be taking a while to open. Effectively, you're opening the application if it's large and then you're reducing it versus if you had a smaller application from the get-go, that opening time would be somewhat quicker. But and I would say in most cases, it's negligible. To be clear, that's just the first time the app is opened after reload, right? Not every time. That's right. And who's the third user we're going to test? Yep, let's do it. So the other user now that I want to get in as is Lisa. And Lisa's a sales director, so she only has visibility in the one territory. So when Lisa gets in, now we see a different picture, right? We only see 51,000 in sales. And instead of seeing that distribution chart that we were just looking at, we're still seeing we're seeing the scatter that we saw originally, but now it's reduced to three reps instead of the, the, the whole sales force. Yeah. And down below... We're looking at revenue by territory and customer, but it's only the Southeast territory. So it's it's automatically drilled down to what territory Lisa can see and just the customer view so that you're seeing what's relevant to Lisa. And over here, we no longer have visibility into the personal information of the employees. You can see that now you have different levels of access for different users and different columns are being hidden. Great. So now I'll go over to the associations to, to show the difference in what Lisa can see versus Claire. Okay. All right, and now you can see a much smaller set of data. You can see uh, much fewer rows, and we're only looking at the Southeast Territory now and the city of Raleigh. The reduction is doing exactly what it should be doing. Associations are still working, right? So I can still see that, but it's only at the level that she has visibility into. So how are you able to manipulate the app to show and hide the different charts and fields? So let me go back out to my hub here and go into my uh, unpublished copy that's in my personal space. Right, so now we're, we're actually opening this with section access turned off, and that's that, that one section access declaration commented out. Okay. Instead of that click logo that was in the corner here, I've got this, this actual drop-down box. So this is one object that's actually using the show and hide. It's hiding the text box with the image in it, and it's showing me a, a list box. And now I have actual visibility into user-level information. So if I want to impersonate Lisa or Claire or myself, I can all I need to do is click on these. This is working just like the associative model works. Right, so those tables are still in the data model, but now they're no longer section access tables. They're just a part of the regular data model. That's exactly right. They're just regular old tables, right? So you can see as I, as I click it, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the visibility that I would see as if I logged in and everything was being reduced. So how do you configure those show and hide settings? Let me actually get into edit mode. I've got some sheets that I've duplicated here, and now I can actually edit the sheet and see what's actually driving those show conditions. So I'll start with the table here. This is the, probably the easiest thing to look at first. So we've got the salary field, office city, and phone. So the one thing to keep in mind is when, when you're using section access with column level security, if a column is omitted and it's in a visualization, the visualization won't render. It'll actually fail. You actually have to, to put in a little protection for that if you're going to omit the field for users that should see that visualization. So one option is to hide the column or swap it with a different column, or you use a, a container with different visualizations in it. And I guess the third option would be show them one sheet versus another. So I'm gonna start here at the field level and a table, and we'll just look at the salary expression. 
here is your show conditions. So show com if, and I'm, what I'm actually checking is that emit group, the field that I created. And if the emit group is equal to salary, then that means don't show salary. Otherwise, show it. Minus one is true. Okay. So that's that's how you hide it or show it based on the profile. That's exactly right. So just uh, just to reinforce that, if I look at office, same evaluation, except we're looking at the, the office emit group instead of salary. Right. So that way, when the office field is eliminated, you won't get an error that the, the visualization can't render because the field doesn't exist. You're telling it to disable the field and knowing that it's already not there. That's a great tip for uh, for hiding columns with a show condition. I, did, I wasn't even familiar with that concept, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's actually it's, it's one of those things that uh, it's it's uh, it's a best kept secret, I guess. Right? <laughs> which shouldn't be a secret. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and then let's let's talk about it at the visualization level. So in this case, I, I wanted to drive the marketing manager, Claire, into a completely different visualization. Data reduction aside, I just wanted her to see something else. So instead of the scatter chart, uh, we use a show high container. Uh, if you, those of you familiar with ClickView, it's, it's very similar to that. Here's a container object. And uh, the content would be the charts that are in it. So it's actually the scatter chart and the distribution plot that we use to show different visualizations based on the axis, right? So in this case, the distribution plot, what I'm checking in the C is if the, the count of territories is equal to two, then we know that's our marketing manager. And so she should see the, the distribution chart instead of the scatter plot. Cool. So it's a container that has multiple visualizations in it, and you just show what base, whichever specific visualization based on the profile. You got it, right? That's super cool. And then just to tie that off here, then I clicked on a sheet, and then the last one we have is the show condition for, for that. So I, I'm not using that in this example, but uh, this is something newer that was added. So you have that ability, again, to to show different sheets based on uh, whatever conditions you want to create. It doesn't have to be security. It could be anything. And that's the same applies for the other things. I'm just using security as a, as a way to drive show high conditions. I love this concept of uh, turning off section access and being able to cycle through the different users to help troubleshoot. Can you walk us through how the script is set up? Yes, yes, perfectly. So the data load editor is what we have to get into right here. And then uh, I have one tab set up for section access. And so like I was saying earlier, if I want to show my security tables in a data model. All I have to do is comment that section access decoration. And now my authorization table and my omit fields table become part of the data model so that I can actually select them and impersonate who I want to impersonate without actually having to, to log in as that user, right? And so you can see this is it. These are my two security tables. I only technically need one, but like I was saying earlier, I created this omit group field to then show that one-to-many relationship between a user and the multiple fields that they might need omitted. So contact info is an example. If you're in the contact info omit group, then you're not going to see extension, uh, phone number, and social security. The keywords that I was talking about, access, that's either admin or user. If you're an admin, you're going to have visibility into all the data. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a user, then then the data reduction is going to be applied based on whatever you're using as a reduction field. So these are both keywords, access and user ID. Reduction is not a keyword. It's just whatever name you designate for your security key, which is going to link to your application section. So this part right here, this declaration, is where your your underlying data model fields will begin to load. Okay. This link between reduction in the section access script and reduction in the data model is, is really where the actual reduction is happening. If I'm in a, a reduction of one, then I'm only gonna see data related to Office ID one. If I'm in four, then I'm gonna see Office ID one and two. If I'm all, I'm gonna see one through five. Right, that makes sense. Now, the one thing I want to point out here, all is something that I just use to help with the testing. Technically, if you are a admin user, you're going to have visibility on all the data. But using this this method of turning off section access and being able to test everything, if I didn't have this in here, then then, then the admin actually wouldn't see everything. So, uh, for testing purposes, you might want to have an if condition to to add these duplicate set of keys for the admin. Versus in production, you might want to just use the admin. Does that make sense? I understand. Yeah, you're just recreating the admin rights for uh, data association for testing purposes, but otherwise, if you wouldn't need it. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. So that's that's everything that's behind it. There's different layers of granularity. How would you manage a more complex reduction? For example, not just office location. What if it's product and department? Yeah. So that's a good question. 
Well, in that case, you would just you would set up a composite key, and uh, that actually helps w segue into one of the slides that I that I wanted to show. Okay. Many of you may have already been working with the low script for a while, so you might be familiar with star schemas and snowflake schemas and whatnot. I think most often when somebody's building a data model, they just bring in the tables as is, and they don't create a, an explicit fact table or a link table. And, that, and that's fine, but when you're using security and, and you have these different levels of granularity, you would have to create a composite key for all those values. So let's just use department and product as an example. You would have a field that would have department, maybe separated by a pipe, and then the product. And then you would link that into your link table. So here you have your uh, multiple fact tables. And so that link table is going to operate as a junction box for all your access rights into those facts. So that way you're not having to, to duplicate facts. You're just managing all that through your security table. And so every value that should have visibility into fact one or fact two, you're managing that here, right? And the same token, you can do that with a combined fact table. This is all precipitated on having a security field that has all the values in your composite security key that you would need to determine what facts you have visibility into and what dimensions you have visibility into. So that way you're not managing a tangled mess of facts and aggregation. And I've seen a lot of different users try to, to manage this through really complex formulas. And the easiest thing is to create the link table when you have complex security. Okay, that makes sense. Is there a way so you can set up the same section access tables between multiple documents? So you're sharing the same access across multiple apps? Yeah, actually, so you could use what's called an include script. So you could actually store the, the script for section access in a, in a file, in a separate file, a text file, or a QBS file, and reference that include statement. Uh, effectively, it's reading the, the code in as if it was part of the load script, but it's just reading it from a separate file. And any of you that have any web development experience would be familiar with using include files. But it simply is it's the script that you would use for your section access, but you stored it in a separate file, and then you're just picking that file up and it will interpret that as part of native script. Just so everyone is aware, we'll include a link with the recording of this session on Click Community to the same demo app that Mike was using today. So you can reference that if you'd like. Mike, what are some key takeaways from today? Yeah, so perfect. One thing I promised earlier was I, I wanted to cover some of the keywords. So if you have some experience with section access with ClickView, you're familiar with NT name. In SAS, you're using user ID. So that's one of the, the bigger distinctions. And there's also a, a group keyword that can be used in SAS. There's a couple other things that I'm not going to get into in this, but we'll, we'll share this and uh, along with some other resources that will really get into some of the details. If you're, you know, let's say if you're coming from ClickView and you're coming in the ClickSense and what, what changes you might need to consider when you're implementing section access in Sense. So we'll include a lot of links and, and helpful information and tips and tricks that the Troy will package up and put out there for you guys to consume. And I think that should cover most of the things I wanted to touch on. Yeah, we'll definitely include links to all of the documentation where you can find more information and resources. Then it's time for Q&A. Please submit your questions in the Q&A panel on the left side of your ON24 console. Mike, which question would you like to address first? So the question is, in ClickView section access settings, there is the strict exclusion setting. I've never understood what the checkbox does. Can you explain? So what that does is it implies that if there's no values that match the fields you're reducing on, then you actually get to see everything with strict exclusion unchecked. So in, in, in ClickView, you, you would always want to check that to ensure that somebody who didn't have matching values wouldn't then end up having visibility in all your data. Now in, in ClickSense, there is no strict exclusion setting because it is, it's, it's strict exclusion by default, right? So for those of you that are actually migrating from ClickView to ClickSense, that's just one thing to be aware of when you're actually creating your section access or when you're mi doing the migration. Okay. Next question. All right. Let's see. Okay. So I'm using section access to limit the access level of the data for each department. Each department chief should only see the data of their department, but for some sheets, I want them to see all the data. Is there a way to do that? So the the sheets themselves don't have anything to do with the data. The, the data reduction is going to eliminate the data that they can't see. So that's something that you're going to have to determine in your data model w where the security should be applied and what, what value should be reduced. If the, if the question is, I don't want them to see some sheets, then, then there are show conditions on the sheets. But if it's around the data and you truly want to secure the data, then it should be reduced out. Otherwise, you, just, you would have to manage it differently. OK. 
Um, let's see. So is it possible to restrict action to certain fields in a table to all users? Uh, I'm not quite sure when we say restrict action, what we're looking for. Um, or if it's just visibility, then, and if we're trying to restrict it from all users, then I just wouldn't load it in the data model. That, that would be the, the, the simple. Um, if, if there's for some reason it needed to be part of the data model, then I would use, uh, I, would, I would apply that field uh, to to the emit keyword, the reserve word that is in your entitlements table. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, is there the way to uh, a way to have global section access and section action application table that can be applied to multiple documents without having it in the script of each app? Now, that was something we we covered when we were talking about include. So, um, if you want to reference include script with ClickSense, you can you can find plenty of help on the community on that or in the help. And let's see what else we have. So is there a way to build the section access authentication based on their SAS login? So it automatically limits the, the data based on who they are without having a separate password for each app. Yes, that's that's exactly what we're doing with section access. So we, we are we're taking that user logon uh, based on the 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 subject ID and that's that's their, their user and then they are being reduced uh, uh, Based on the entitlements that you've already set up, so you don't you don't actually have to have a, a separate password for each app. Okay. Next question. Uh, when I developed the app using ClickSense locally, everything seems to work. But after importing the app on the production server, only the admin has access. Uh, uh, I could probably help, but I, I don't know. I think I need a little more context to to answer that. So there might be some difference in the way. It, it sounds like there's difference in, differences in the way that the user is being identified. So that uh, uh, while it's working locally, it's 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 interpreting that user ID as something different. That would be my guess. Let's see, in ClickView, I can use the loop and reduce within Publisher instead of section access with large QBWs. Is there something similar in ClickSense so that the data in the app is limited instead of limiting access to the data? Uh, there, there are techniques to do a loop and reduce. There isn't something specifically the same as loop and reduce in the ClickSense scheduler, um, but there are there are ways to, to manage that. You can do it through the, the API uh, is one option. I know that there's a couple other examples out there. If you look up loop and reduce for ClickSense, you'll see um, some alternate ways to, to accomplish that. But um, I'll also say the, the, I mean, if it's a concern around the data size, we also have different techniques like on-demand app generation and also dynamic views. And what, what on-demand app generation is just high level is you have an aggregate app, you make some selections in it, it passes those selections to another app, which reloads on the fly. And um, dynamic views is similar, ex uh, except that you're working with one application and then certain tables or certain objects are then um, are refreshing based on the selections uh, in real time. So that is uh, those are a couple of different ways where you wouldn't have to necessarily apply loop and reduce, kind of a, a different way of thinking. Those are great tips. Yeah, thanks. So let's see what else we have. So section access reducing data on fields of numbers, does that work or should the format be text and all reduction fields? Uh, it, it doesn't really matter what the format is. If you have two values that are the same on both ends, then it's automatically going to reduce based on that. So if it's numbers in one value and text in another value and a combination of numbers and text, uh, they'll all work if you have a match. Okay, next question. Okay, so what are some best practices to reduce access based on multiple field values in the same record line? Uh, composite keys, ultimately. So you're gonna, uh, when we're talking about the data model and using a link table as your junction box or a combined fact table, uh, that's that's how you're going to have to accomplish that. You're going to create a composite key that that, that uh, ultimately strings together other every value that you want to be a part of that key, and that that is your that is your security right there. Okay, can you apply section access using dates? Yep, just another field. Uh, it could be a date by itself, or it could be a combination of dates, but. Um, yeah, I guess that's the. I'd be I'd be curious to know a little bit more a little bit more about how you would apply just a date as security and what the use case is. But that's uh, but at the end of the day, it's just another field. Um, what are the limitations on granting section access for specific sheets and click? Um, so that was the show condition that I uh, had previously demonstrated in the demo. So you'll have the ability to do show hide in the the three places. Just to recap, you have it in the the object, you have it at the field level, and you also have it at the sheet level. And 
let's see what else grant exception access for sheets there's also is this available for enterprise on-prem yes all our products you can apply section access uh, except for local copies of click sense which aren't uh, part of part of the enterprise deployment uh, okay, and then next one, how can I efficiently restrict access over multiple values and where records are not present in one table but are in another? And this is something I've encountered before. You, you're trying to create security on fields that exist in different tables. And and so th you, that goes back to that example I, I, I gave previously where you, you want to use a link table. The link table solves a lot of problems because, again, it is like a junction box. So you can shove everything you need to on that security field to help drive what's in your fact table. In this case, it sounds like you have a, uh, ultimately what would be a, a, a combined fact table where you have facts coming from, from multiple, multiple tables. Okay, Mike, we have time for one last question. Okay, and let's see. So is, is there a standard way to allow a user to see his own detailed data and only summary data for users? Okay, th or for other users. I think that's a good question because this comes up a lot. What you want to do in that case is actually, uh, it typically we say just bring everything at the detail level because we, we would then aggregate. But if you're applying security and you need somebody to see the aggregate information, then, then it's not going to work. But what you could do is actually add the summary data in as separate records, separate transactions. And you could uh, you put that in um, its, its own table or you could add it as part of your fact table if you're using a fact table. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Again, thank you for everybody for your time. I, I appreciate this. I, you know, I love I love being able to share the the things that I've learned along the way. Section access. I know when I first started working with it, just just seemed like a black box, and it, and there wasn't a lot of information around some of the best practices and all the things that you could do with it back in 2007 when I started working with it. So uh, happy to happy to share the things I've picked up along the way, and, and hopefully you you've gained something from this, and and you'll be able to uh, uh, be successful in, in implementing security in your organization. And uh, so with that, uh, again, thank you, and you'll see me on the community. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this session. And thank you to Mike for presenting. We appreciate getting experts like Mike to share with us. Here's our legal disclaimer. And thank you once again. Have a great rest of your day.